and uh, I've had two doctors help me to get the math correct in its surface areas. All seven are perfect in surface area, just like the cube, just like the tetrahedron. The tetrahedron has all surfaces exactly the same surface area. So is that. I can show you the right angle. That's the right angle. 90 degrees. Okay, but this area here and this area here are different. This is much smaller in area than this one. So what I have to do is find exactly where Carl found this. And this angle has to be a little steeper. So this is 90. Okay, and this is 91, 92, 93, 94. And that's 94.8, so, so on, so on, and so on, so on. It's perfect. So now we have the mathematics that tells you exactly that this thing is all based on gravity. Nothing on levity on the internet. Nothing. Why? Nobody's done it yet. Now, if I take this one again and pressure, 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 and I push all the corners, it turns into another new form, one of the platonic forms. This is, this is an icosahedron. This one is a tetrahedron on top. So when you go into the levity of the expansion world, the unseen, you're finding out that the platonic forms are also following an order in where we can't see. That's this one. Where is this in the heart? If I take this cube, and this is another way that they study, these are called reversals. This little form right here is another way that they studied in the past on how to transform form. Okay, this is called buckling. The rest are called truncations or depressions yeah, or cutting off the corners. Now look at what this is. If I turn this little guy in, 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 into uh, uh, the reversal of this shape, what does it look like? What, does, what is logically, what is that shape? Look what it is. It's the same size cube. The inside exactly is in the middle. There's some, what is this behind this? When I found out that the seven-sided form, I found that the geometry, if I take the spaces and I look at the geometry inside the tetrahedron, is exactly the same size cube. And this is all done mathematically. Okay? This isn't some guesswork. I found this, and then I found this later, that they were the same size. But what is this? Also, I was very upset with this because that cube wasn't in the middle from here to here. I was upset with that. I wanted it in the middle. Of course, in geometry, you can't do anything. You can't cheat. You, can't, you know, it doesn't work. So I, I couldn't get it down. So I was depressed for a couple of weeks. And then I decided, why don't I put this into a sphere? And I put it into a sphere, like this. And it was exactly in the middle, just like the tetrahedron in the sphere. Exactly where the circle inside the tetrahedron fits was the same size as this put into the sphere also, right in the middle. How can I bring this into the centric forces? How can I bring a peripheral form into the centric? And what I found out was is that I can't cut off corners. I can't do truncations. And also, I can't cut off edges. But I found that half to bring this into the world is a vortex suction. This has to spin like a vortex. And I found out I could put it into a cube. So I did that already. I found out that I could put it into a cube. And instead of cutting all the corners, I spun it. I spun it in a vortex. No one's ever done this before. A whole new geometry coming in. And when I did that, I found out that it went from a tetrahedron to this guy right down here. And this one is, you can see that these little yellow circles, expansion of a form 
and the contraction of the form. Because this is what's going on, okay, in the heart. These are research papers that I did before I came. And um, I had to learn the language. Um, so I start out very slow, and now I can read them. And I like them. I didn't like them at first. <laughs> and what I'm going to do with all these research papers, okay, what I've done with them, is that what I have found in the geometry backs all that up. There isn't a thing in here I disagree with, except a little bit that um, about a, a dissection way of taking the heart apart is the only thing that I, I agree with a lot of it, but there's one major thing I don't agree with. But basically, um, all of this research is great, great stuff. They're all on the internet. Um, I have a list of all of the uh, resources that I got. Did everybody get those? Oh, Kelly has them. She'll pass them out. It lists all of the research papers um, where uh, any of these things that I happen to talk about that you're interested in, I've put the research paper where you can find it on the internet and what part of the research is covering. And we open it up until it became a uh, tetrahedron. <coughs> and in the middle is the seven-sided form. So if I take the original size of the tetrahedron, and I open it up, you remember that this turns into a tetrahedron twice as big. And this is the twice as big tetrahedron. And of course, it should fit over this perfectly, and it does. So this is the transformation of this one through a lawful expansion, lawfully expanding into this form. And this gets to this point here, it can't go anywhere. Now, if we go over onto this side, this is all about expansion. This is all about contraction. Over opposites. I had to find out how to take this form and contract it. But what did I do? The first thing I do, I start cutting the corners off. <coughs> Which you know doesn't work. So what I thought, the only way that I could do this was to get, is to go back to this tetrahedron, okay, which is where I started. Go back to this tetrahedron and put it into Earth. And what is Earth? The cube. Throughout history, this has always been considered the cube, uh, the Earth. It's because it's 90 degrees, it's the only place, if you look at Hubble, wherever it photographs, you never find 90 degrees. Now, only find 90 degrees here. And of course, everything grows at 90 degrees. All your plants, your trees, it's the four directions. It's the four seasons. That's all based on four. Four winds. And that's why they always chose this for Earth. Not because the Earth is square or cube, but that it is at 90 degrees and it's different. It's different than all the other forms. All the other forms do not have 90 degrees, only the Earth. Okay, so I decided I would put this, and I showed you, I decided I would put this into a cube. Now over here, now I looked at all the geometrists that work with this, and there are some that they have. The one that looked at that a lot of you may know is Lawrence Edwards. Okay, that would probably ring a bell to some people. He tried it too, and the only thing that he could come up with was that this was reversing. I didn't explain anything, it just it, it shows the, you know, I, mean, I can tell everything, lots of things are reversing. So, um, I had this on, on my wall for a couple years. And I walked by, looked at it, looked at it, whatever. Because there is no explanation for this. Now there's one that Kelly will show you, but that's, uh, I'll show you the problem with these. So, direction, and the ones on the outside of the chamber runs like this direction. And they make this kind of shape. This is out of the research. Oh, red comes right to the end. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Look, see? Yeah? What's up? Oh, I did it, but it's just in my way. 
And what's so amazing about this is that the inside has this 22 and a half degree, and the outside is the same cone. Another amazing thing. This is also 22 and a half degrees on the outside. What that means is, is that the wall inside the just Hebrew is parallel from the inside to the outside. Okay, so what I was interested in is in this guy. I wanted to know what this, how, how do you make that? So what I did was I took, I took this. And I put lines across it. And the reason you put lines across it is in projective geometry, you study planes. Okay, this is a plane now. You study planes with lines that go across the plane so you can see what it does in projection. Well, I put them on there. Now, this is the original, and this is not in any of the books. What I decided to do is try to find out the size of the cone that goes into this thing. And you know that I have that blue plastic that goes around there, which creates this inner circle. Of course, that's the inner circle of spinning. That's where I got it from, right? So that you know it's waffle, and you also know that this circle here is exactly half of this, because I drew it yesterday on the board. All right, so I want to find out what's going on. I'm going to put this in here. Honestly, this is the first one, so it's all beat up. And I had to cut a hole in here because as you turn this and you don't, the cones kind of go out like this and it's hard to get in. You had to make a hole. So I took the first and tried to make one cone. And I used the cones like this with a red line to make sure I had it correct. And I turned this into a cone. And I know that the outside and the inside, uh, I know I have two cones. And what's amazing is it turns off curves. There's curves going on here. Like this. Well, it didn't fit in there. Good. Oh, I did. Okay, I'll make it three. So I turn it around to make it three. So I, made, I have to turn around to make it three. And when I finally got it around to three, it turns all the triangles. They're all triangles. When you have three cones, they're all triangles. I didn't know that. On the books. So what I did again, thank you. What I did again is to try to see if it would fit. So at three, all triangles would fit. Nope. Oh, I'm going to do another one. So I did another one, and I turned it to four, and it turned it all into a heart, even this is still not big enough. It turned into all squares. If you take them at the correct angle, if you take them at this angle, see they're squares, they're squares, and if you take them, uh, at the angle and where the little paper went. Uh, somewhere it's here. But anyway, I show it here. Here's what they're saying when those cross. This shape right here is this shape. So, when I put it in, it fits. It fits in here. That's this cone. Get it back to squares. That cone. It fits. Once I turn it enough, it fits that cone. It goes in there. So this is amazing to me that this happened. Not only that did I get the, the same configuration that's going on in the fibers, okay, 
even with the research. It has that same shape. So there are four there, but there are eight layers. I only have four here to go in there. So uh, what I had to do was make two of these. that the vortex 
So start to go inside the heart. Or inside. You see how it sprays out like this on the side? That's because of those two circles. The outside circle, which is the outside part of the heart, and the inside circle. The inside circle prevents the vortex from getting any deeper. Keeps it away from the apex. Now try to get it in. Now try to get the vortex to go in. There, see how it's starting to go in? Now I can get it in there, look at it. Starting to go in, takes time. It just shows you the dynamics, the fluid dynamics of how this works. Now it's starting to get down in there a little deeper, which is where all the suction is. Right here is where all the suction is. And down, yeah, it's getting closer to the apex, but you see the outside of the mitra's valve, the size of it, starts to spray out and won't allow it to go any deeper. So here's the spray. See that spray? It won't go in. See that spray? That spray that goes around like this is preventing the vortex from going any deeper. And that's why the apex doesn't have to be a strong muscle. It's thin. Based on a human heart, heart doesn't do this, but the shape does. No other mixer does this. Already you heard an inversion. It's a sound you never heard before. Oh. See that? That's an inversion. Yeah, I hardly have to skin it at all. This is amazing. Thinner. They don't do this. spinning like that, just like the heart. There are three vortexes. I don't know if you can watch them, but they're there. So that's an inversion. Thank you.